All right. So hello again, everyone. Um, this talk was originally supposed to be by a different engineer. It's supposed to be by Soren. And unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, he couldn't be here to present it. And we had to sub in someone else to do the presentation. So Callum from the SI UK Game Eco team has recorded a presentation. It's a little bit shorter than build, um, but we've done what we could in a unforeseen circumstance. So I'll just hit play and then go sit down. And then at the end, I'll come up and answer any questions. Welcome to my talk about OMGS and Vulcan. This talk is aimed at anyone who thinks Vulcan is not suitable for them or is on the fence about supporting it in their game. To that end, I'll be covering the technical merits of Vulcan and I'll also be addressing some of the common concerns raised by developers. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Callum Shields and I am an engineer in Samsung Research UK's game ecosystem team. I work with developers to optimize their games for Android by analyzing them and providing recommendations on what to improve. With regards to Vulkan, this involves looking for suboptimal uses of the API, such as incorrect barriers, load store ops, and so on. Let me also introduce Galaxy Game Dev. We are a global team of talented engineers working together to achieve the same goals. That goal is to create the best possible gaming experience on Samsung devices. We help our partners optimize their games for mobile devices through the promotion of the latest tools and technologies, such as Vulkan. We provide expert code level support and we even send engineers directly to game studios to get stuck in with the game development. We make contributions to the biggest game engines and we also work closely with Google to enhance the Android platform. Here's a quick rundown of what I'll be covering today. We'll take a look at the OpenGLS and Vulkan APIs and do high level comparison of the pros and cons of each. Then I will address some common concerns that developers have raised to us and finally I will attempt to convince you why you should be using Vulkan. So, let's go ahead and have a look at some of the other differences between OpenGL and Vulkan. On the left hand, I've listed some high level properties for OpenGL, which I think will paint a good picture of the API, and I will compare these with Vulkan on the right. OpenGL has been available over some decades. In the early days, it was decided to design OpenGL as a global state machine, meaning that every individual property of rendering needs to be changed on the fly via function calls. This was okay back then because our rendering pipelines were much simpler thus necessitating less frequent state changes. However, today this legacy design has become a hindrance due to its high CPU overhead. This is also compounded by its inherently single-threaded nature, which stops you from spreading the load across multiple CPU cores, which again was fine when programs were typically single-threaded and CPUs had few cores. Alas, this is no longer the case, so a new API was needed, which is where Vulkan comes in. Vulkan is based off of AMD's Mantle API and was designed with multi-core systems and high fidelity games in mind. Gone is the state machine and in its place are immutable state objects, allowing the driver to be more efficient and allowing the developer to front load the cost of startup. Additionally, API calls can be made on any thread without fuss, eliminating the need for any painful context switching. Other benefits include a more elegant error checking system. OpenGL's error checking is very simple, with only about 8 error flags available that can be retrieved through a function callback. It also has the disadvantage of always running in the background and even in production builds. Vulkan, on the other hand, is using a more elegant solution called Layers, which act more like dynamic libraries that intercept Vulkan API calls. This gives them the added flexibility to be disabled at runtime, so production builds can avoid any unnecessary overhead. The validation layer specifically can be found in the Vulkan SDK and gives far more detailed error messages in GL, including links to the relevant portions of the Vulkan spec. But the layer system is capable of far more than just error checking. RenderDoc, for example, makes use of a layer to enable the replaying of Vulkan calls in a frame, or reshade replaces shaders to add screen space effects. You can even write your own layers if you are so inclined. Layers are a wholly unique feature of Vulkan that GL simply can't replicate. Another point to contend with is that, as has been mentioned before, OpenGL is old and is now in maintenance mode. That means new features will be sparse and liable to come much later than Vulkan. Vulkan, consequently, is still very much being updated, so new hardware features such as ray tracing and mesh shaders, for example, are being added regularly. A final point to consider is the cross-platform design of both APIs. GL was created long before smartphones and web-based rendering, which has resulted in it becoming a bit disjointed, with GLES and WebGL added to address these additions. Vulkan, however, is truly one API for all platforms, including iOS and macOS through the power of Molten VK, 
meaning you only ever have to write and maintain one render path. Let's have a look at some of the other pros and cons between the two APIs. Upon first inspection, it becomes a self-evident the relative difference in complexity between them. Even a cursory glance at the graphics pipeline structure will give you an idea of just how verbose Vulkan is. GL, by comparison, is more concise, and as a result, much easier to learn. The reason for this difference is that in GL, the driver does a lot more behind-the-scenes work for you, creating performance for a far more developer-friendly design. Inversely, Vulkan gives the developer a lot of fingering control, allowing for a greater return on performance. This is most evident in memory management and synchronization. In Vulkan, it is entirely up to the developer to ensure the order of execution is what they expect. Similarly, it is up to the developer to ensure that data is in fast access memory. Textures in the correct layout and the caches are flushed at the correct time. This is the crux of Vulkan's design. Minimalistic drivers and explicit developer control allow for maximum performance. The caveat being that all that control comes over a very steep learning curve. The other major design difference in Vulkan is the clean threading model. As mentioned before, already, GL was never designed with multi-threading in mind, and although future iterations attempted to add that functionality in, it required expensive context switching that just never worked as well as anyone would have liked. Vulkan addresses this by allowing API calls to be made on a, any thread without the need for context switching, but in keeping with its explicit design philosophy, the onus is on the developer to use mutex appropriately and avoid race conditions. This greatly expands the performance ceiling for Vulkan applications over GL. Vulkan is especially useful to mobile as well. Two of the biggest limitations with mobile form factors are temperature and battery. The mobile device will trigger an immediate reaction to deal with high surface temperatures by throttling chip frequencies, which naturally will cause performance to drop, which you do not want. Unfortunately, it's not easy for developers to see this happening during runtime, and there is little they can do to prevent it. In the example to the right, you can see that we start to see thermal throttling at around 3 minutes. We can see the heat continue to rise as the core frequency drops, which results in lower FPS and a worse all-redix gaming experience. Any use of the hardware costs power, of course, but one of the biggest contributors to power consumption and by extent temperature are memory accesses. Vulkan then provides a couple of unique features that help to mitigate this. Multipass rendering allows you to string render passes with the same targets together, thus allowing Tile GPUs to keep the data in tile memory through the entire render pass chain, thus avoiding co copying back and forth uh, to memory between passes. Additionally, Vulkan enables pre rotation, a feature which allows the developer to stop Surface Slinger from doing screen rotations so that they can do it manually in shaders themselves, thus clawing back some additional bandwidth. These features, coupled with Vulkan's general efficiency over GL, make an incredibly valuable to mobile. Finally, to give an example of how all this looks when put together, here are some of the results from the work Samsung did on Wild Rift, which, as you can see, shows Vulcan can achieve higher FPS and lower temperatures in glass, at the same time allowing for smoother gameplay with lower power consumption. Now I will cover some of the concerns that have cropped up when talking to developers and try to assuage your fears. Firstly, our team is small and we do not have the resources to learn Vulcan. This is a valid concern, as we have already discussed, Vulkan is comparatively harder to learn than GL. However, I would like to point out that if you are using a commercial engine such as Unity or Unreal, they already have Vulkan implemented and merely require you to enable Vulkan in the build options to support it. We have experienced driver issues with Vulkan. This shouldn't be a concern anymore. When Vulkan first released, driver stability was spotty to say the least, and you could easily run into bugs. Over time, drivers have improved considerably, and thankfully I can say they are far more stable these days, and bugs are very much a rarity now. So you shouldn't let this concern hold you back from supporting Vulkan. We develop hyper-casual games. Vulkan doesn't just benefit high-fidelity, performance-conscious games. As has already been alluded to, the lower overhead and expanded room for optimization benefits all games by using less power and producing less heat both very important to any mobile device, so there is still a lot of value in supporting Vulkan, even if you don't need its full range of benefits. We are not confident that the engine we use implements Vulkan well. This goes part and parcel with the earlier slide about drivers. In the beginning, engineers were still figuring out how best to use Vulkan, so inevitably it resulted in some very suboptimal implementations. Again, however, the implementations and engines have improved considerably over the years, and you should see a marked improvement in performance over the GL path. 
Bear in mind though, your mileage may vary depending on the engine and version you are using. We support Vulcan, but we have implemented OpenGLS as a fallback position. As we have discussed earlier, the architecture of OpenGLS and Vulkan are very different. Supporting both can increase your workload and will make it harder to fully optimize both render paths. Furthermore, you may be discouraged from supporting your features that the older API doesn't. I would recommend you stick to one and make your implementation of it as the best it can be, rather than try to juggle both. So, how do you choose what API to use? Well, there are a lot of factors to consider, some technical and some non-technical. But ultimately, it will boil down to your game, team size, and consequently what engine you choose. If you are creating a hyper-casual, low-fidelity game and you want no frills and no fuss, then GL will serve you well, but as discussed already, Falcon still has plenty to offer you and should be strongly considered regardless. If you are making a high-fidelity game, however, Falcon becomes near essential if you want to have the best user experience possible. For the engine then, the considerations differ greatly depending on if you're using a commercial engine or your own purpose-built engine. As highlighted previously, most popular commercial engines feature robust implementations of Vulkan ready for you to use. So supporting Vulkan in this game should be relatively straightforward. If you're using your own engine, however, then the choice becomes a lot trickier. This will heavily depend on your circumstances and how many resources and time you can dedicate to writing a Vulkan renderer. I would say, however, that you should lay the groundwork for a Vulcan implementation now so you can future proof your engine for your next project. Finally, let us take a look at some statistics for API support on mobile devices. Vulcan version 1.1 supported by 77% of the mobile market, and Vulcan 1.0.3 covers a further 8%. There is a misconception in the industry that OpenGLS is supported by a lot more devices than Vulcan, but we can see from this chart that this is simply not the case. And if we were to assume that those devices, only supporting GL 2.0, are not suitable for gaming, then the gap merely becomes 8.5%. So you aren't gaining as many devices by emitting Vulcan as you may have originally thought. So, quickly recap. Vulcan is the best choice for high fidelity graphics and should be prioritised when performance is important. Vulcan is especially beneficial to mobile devices because it reduces power consumption and heat output. Engine driver implementations of Vulkan are robust and stable. Vulkan is widely supported by devices on the market today. If you would like to know more, here are some of the links to the resources that we were used for this talk. Additionally, a link to a comparison video done by ARM has also been added. On that note, ARM have done a lot of comparisons between the two APIs for mobile, as well as best practices, so I encourage you to read their excellent blogs. And just before I finish up, Here's a list of notable games that have used Vulkan in the past few years. All of these developers saw sizable gains by adopting Vulkan, so I encourage you to follow their example and adopt it too. That's it for me. I hope you'll walk away feeling a little less daunted by Vulkan and with a better appreciation for its value to you. Thank you.